the standard uh, prediction in institutional theory is that when strong norms develop in an organization's environment, organizations are compelled to adjust, to adapt, to adopt those norms or fail or die. So the, the, the standard uh, institutional theory prediction is quite compelling for organizations. Now what, uh, what I'm trying to do in this line of work, together with some other colleagues in other institutions uh, elsewhere, is to uh, sort of un, uh, unravel the process whereby organizations cope with institutional pressures and show that organizations have some leeway, the, the, what we call uh, in, in organizational theory that there's a room for agency, for uh, proactive strategies vis-a-vis -vis those institutional pressures. And the case of Notre Dame is, in, is interesting because uh, the case shows that uh, Notre Dame and the Department of Economics at Notre Dame uh, had been able uh, to resist uh, alignment with mainstream economics uh, over a period of three decades and that it took uh, the ultimately ultimately the university aligned with mainstream economics uh, but it didn't do it at uh, you know uh, in, a, in a sort of single shot or uh, as I would say as a single man uh, the process was much more uh, uh, subtle and, and complex and that's what we try to, to show in that case. In the discipline of economics, you have really this, uh, this trend toward uh, you know, mainstream and dominance by neoclassical economics. That kind of economics really went against some deeply established uh, beliefs about what the University of Notre Dame stands for. So that's why, why it took so much time for the University of Notre Dame to acknowledge and to align with mainstream economics. That's because mainstream economics went against some perception of the identity, let's call it the identity or the soul of, or the essence of Notre Dame. How power and leadership uh, played in the picture, uh, they played a, a crucial role. Uh, it took some forceful, decisive moves by a new dean to shift the balance uh, of economics toward the mainstream. But the interesting thing is that uh, the, uh, this was not about merely about a sort of crude exercise of power by a dean who comes in and who says, guys, now this is the way we to go and I'm uh, cutting uh, jobs here and reallocating them. That it was not an exercise in uh, sort of uh, crude power. The new dean had to challenge the beliefs held by, by heterodox economics about the identity of Notre Dame. So the, the battle, so to speak, there was a, an ideological battle in the first place to reframe the identity of Notre Dame and to emphasize that uh, Notre Dame could be uh, involved with Catholic social teaching and uh, could study uh, poverty, uh, labor, and so on and so forth, using the mainstream paradigm so the dean was very, very careful first to reframe the identity of Notre Dame to make it compatible with mainstream economics before he eventually used the traditional you know, levers of power at the disposal of the dean. Is a strong identity, uh, is, it, uh, is it an asset uh, or is it a liability? You can think of identity as a strong anchor, uh, as a sort of theory of the organization that anchors it in its environment. It gives it character, personality. It enables the organization to stand uh, as you know, different, distinctive, unique among other organizations. So that's, that's sort of the upside or the, 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 the beauty of identity. But you can also think that when 
the environment changes. There are new technologies, a new competitive landscape, new uh, products, uh, new regulations. So when there are these major uh, disruptions in the organization's environment, then uh, a strongly, deeply rooted organizational identity may become a trap for the organization. And the, the challenge for leaders is to figure out when and how far a strong identity can be uh, a major competitive asset and when it begins to become a sort of hindrance, a weight uh, on the way to adaptation. That was a paper that uh, I wrote with uh, John Kimberley, my co-author, uh, a few years ago in the Sloan Management Review. Uh, we titled it uh, the, uh, identity, Escaping the Identity Trap. And uh, the, the argument we make in that paper is indeed uh, that many uh, once very, very high profile, very successful uh, businesses uh, eventually disappeared from Earth uh, or, or, or died as organizations because uh, the, the leadership of those organizations were not able to take stock of major disruptions in their environments. The examples we use in that paper are Polaroid, which is dead as an organization. It was reborn as a brand, but Polaroid, the organization, is dead. Uh, we also use the example of Mulinex, which is also a, a, a very, a very powerful illustration of how an organization can become trapped in a perception of itself and how that perception uh, can harm or destroy brand equity. Interestingly, in both the cases, in both cases of Polaroid and Mulinex, for the brands to have a new life, the organizations, Polaroid the organization, Mulinex the organizations, had to be disbanded, had to disappear. So that's really, uh, these are two interesting cases where the or, where organizational identity, in a way, becomes a straight jacket for a brand. And without liberating the brand from that straight jacket, the brand can also disappear. <laughs>